let's let's make some predictions he can be wrong about. Good. <laughs> <laughs> what major political people are you thinking will run in 2024, including Trump, junior or senior, mm -hmm. or Ivanka? I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> any Trump. <laughs> Trump. Uh, and uh, who do you think wins? I think Joe Biden will run again in 2024, and I think he will run against someone with the last name Trump. I do not know whether that is Trump or Trump Jr., uh, but I think one of those people will probably be the GOP nominee in 2024. Who was it? Some prominent political figure, was it Romney? Somebody like that mm -hmm. said that Trump will win the primary if he runs again. Of course, that, that's not even a question. Trump is the single most popular figure in the Republican Party by orders of magnitude. Still. Oh, I mean, probably more. Honestly, there was a actually I can tell you because I saw the data, which is that pre January 6th, it was like 54 percent of Republicans wanted him to run again. Then it went down eight points after January 6th, two days later. And then after impeachment, it went right back up to 54 percent. So the exact same number mm -hmm. is in February at post impeachment vote as it was after November. Now, look, yeah, again, surveys, bullshit, et cetera. But like, that's all the data we have. That's what I can point you to. If Trump runs, he will be the nominee and he will be he will be the 2024 nominee. I just don't know if he wants to. It, it, it really depends. Like, do you, do you think he wins after the Trump vaccine heals all of us? Do you think Trump wins? It depends on how popular culture functions over the next four years. And I can tell you that they are because I don't think Biden has that much to do with it. Because, again, <laughs> Trump is not a manifestation of an affirmative policy action. Yeah. It is a defensive bulwark wall against cultural liberalism uh, at its best. So it's like, this is why it doesn't matter what Biden does. If there are more riots, if there is a more sense of persecution amongst people who are more lean towards conservative or like, hey, I don't know about that, that's crazy, then he very well could win. Let's okay. Let's say Joe Biden doesn't run, and they put up like Kamala Harris. I think he would. I think he would beat her. And I, I don't think there's a question that Trump would beat Kamala Harris in 2024. And you don't think anybody else? I don't know how the the process works. You don't think anybody else on the Democratic side can uh, take the? Well, how could you run against the sitting vice president? You know, it's like if Joe Biden Joe Biden has a 98 percent approval rating in the Democratic Party. If he says she is my heir, I think enough people will listen to him in a competitive primary or a non-competitive primary. And then there's all these things about how primary systems themselves are rigged. The DNC could make it known that they'll blacklist anybody who does try and primary Kamala Harris. Um, and look, I mean, progressives aren't necessarily all that popular amongst actual Democrats. Like we found that out um, yeah. during the election. There's an entire constituency which loves Joe Biden and Joe Biden level politics. And so if he tells them to vote for Kamala, I think I think she would probably get it. But again, it's, there's a lot of game theory obviously happening. But see, I yeah. think you're talking about everything you're saying is correct mm -hmm. about mediocre candidates. It feels like if there's somebody like a really strong, I don't want to use this term incorrectly, but populist, somebody mm -hmm. that speaks to the the 80 percent that's is able to provide bold, eloquently described solutions that are popular. I think that breaks through all of this nonsense. How? How do they break through the primary system? Because the problem is the primary system is not populism. It's primary. So it's like- But you don't think they can tweet their way to- Well, you have to be willing to win a GOP primary. You basically have to be at- Whoever wins the GOP primary, in my opinion, will be the person most hated by the left. One of the people, things that people forget is, you know who came in second to Trump? Ted Cruz. And the reason why is because Ted Cruz was the second most hated guy by liberals in America, a second to Trump. They have nothing in policy in common. But don't you yeah. think this kind of brilliantly yeah. described system of hate being the 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 main mechanism yeah. of, of our <laughs> electoral choices? Yeah. Don't you think that just has to do with mediocre candidates? Like it like it's, it's basically the field of candidates, including Trump, including everybody w was just like, didn't make anyone feel great. Right. It's like, really? This is what we have to choose from? Maybe a Mark Cuban or like uh, Mark Cuban as a Democrat or 
It would have to be somebody like that. Somebody who, because here's the thing about Trump. It's not just that it was Trump. He was so fucking famous. Like people don't yeah. realize he was so famous. Like I, even when I first met Trump, I met a couple of other presidents, but when I met Trump, even I felt like kind of starstruck because I was like, yo, this is the guy from The Apprentice. Yeah. I'm like, this is the dude. Like from The Apprentice. Yeah. Because like, I'm like, my dad and I used to sit and watch The Apprentice when I was in high school. And then one of the guys was from College Station where I grew up and we're like, oh my God, like that guy's on The Apprentice. Like it was a phenomenon. There's mm -hmm. like that level. It's kind of like when I met Joe Rogan, I'm like, holy shit, that's yeah. Joe Rogan. That's, <laughs> I don't feel that way when I meet Mitt Romney or Tom Cotton or Josh Hall. And I met all of them. Um, but there's I'm a like, lot of celebrities, right? Do you think there's some celebrities we're not even thinking about that could step in? The Rock? have to so. be. So I, I was about to say, I think The Rock could do it. But does he want to do it? I mean, it's terrible. Like, it's a terrible gig. It's very hard to do. I don't know if The Rock necessarily has, like, the formed policy agenda. Because then here's the other problem. What, what if we set ourselves up for a system where, like, these people keep winning, but, like, with Trump, they have no idea how to run a government? Yeah. It's actually really hard, right? And you have to have the know-how and the trust to find the right people. This is This is where the genius element comes in is you have to understand that front and you have to understand how to execute discrete tasks. Like, this is the FDR. This is why it's so hard. Like, FDR, Lincoln, TR. They were who they were, and they live in history, and their name rings, like, for a reason. And, yeah, I mean, one of the most depressing lessons I got from 2020 is at almost, it seems like, in my opinion, that we over-learn the lesson of our success and not of our failures. For example, like, we have this narrative in our head that we always have the right person at the right time during crisis. And in some cases, it was true. We didn't deserve Lincoln. We didn't deserve FDR. We didn't deserve, um, we didn't deserve a lot of presidents at times of crisis. But then you're like, okay, George W. Bush, 9-11, that was terrible. Um, Reconstruction, Andrew Johnson, awful, right? Like we had several periods in our history where the crisis was there they they were called and they did not show up. And I really, it hadn't happened in my lifetime except for 9-11. And even then you could kind of see that as an opportunity for somebody like Obama to come in and fix it. But then he didn't do it. And then Trump didn't do it. And you realize, I feel like our politics are most analogous to like the 1910s, like all in terms of the Gilded Age, in terms of that Remember those that long period of presidents between um between like Lincoln and Teddy Roosevelt? We were like, wait, like who was president? Like mm -hmm. or or even in even TR was like an exception where you'll have like Calvin Coolidge who yeah. like silent cow. So we're living through Grover that. Grover Cleveland. I, that's kind of how I, if I think of us within history, I feel like we're in one of those times. We're just waiting. It feels really yeah. important to us right now. Like right. this is the most important moment exactly. in history, but it might be- the, It could just the, be a blip, right? A 20, yeah. 30 year blip. Like when you think about who was president between 1890 and 19, before, I mean, yeah, between like 1888 and 1910, like nobody really thinks about that period of America, but like that was an entire lifetime for people, right? Like what did they, how did they feel? about the country that they were in. That's hilarious. That's how I kind of think about it's, where we it's are It's funny right to now. think, I mean, I don't yeah. want to minimize it, right. but like we haven't really gone through a, a World War II style crisis. So like say that there is a crisis in like several decades of that level, right? Existential risks mm -hmm. to a large portion of the world. Then what will be remembered is World War II, maybe a little bit about Vietnam, and then whatever that crisis is, and this whole period that we see as dramatic, even coronavirus, even nine eleven, even nine eleven, uh, it's like because you can look at how many people died and all those kinds of things, all the drama around the war on terror and all mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Maybe Obama will be remembered for being the first African American president, but then that's like that's yeah, that's fascinating <laughs> to think about. Oh man, even Trump will be like, oh, okay, he was cool, that guy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like. Maybe he'd be remembered as the first uh, celebrity. I mean, Reagan was already a governor, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah he so, was. so like the first apolitical celebrity that was a. So maybe if there's more celebrities in the future, they'll say that Trump was the first person to pave the um, the way for celebrities to win. Oh man, yeah. 
And uh, yeah, I still I still hold that this this era will probably be remembered. The you know people say I talk about Elon way too much, but <laughs> but the reality is like there's not many people that are doing the kind of things he's doing. Is why I talk about it. is I think this era it's not necessarily Elon and SpaceX, but this era will be remembered by the new the like of the space exploration of uh, the commercial of companies getting into space exploration of space travel and perhaps perhaps like artificial intelligence around social media all those kinds mm -hmm. of things this might be remembered for that but every all the political bickering all of that nonsense that might we might might be very well forgotten one way to think about it is that the internet is so young yeah i think about That's it right. <laughs> um with so jeff jarvis he's a media scholar i respect he's not the only person to say this but many others have which is that look this is kind of like the printing press there was a whole 30 years war because yeah. of the printing press. Yeah. It took a long time for shit to sort out. I think that's where we're at with the internet. Like at a certain level, it disrupts everything. And that's a good thing. It can be very tumultuous. Um, I never felt like I was living through history until coronavirus. Like, yeah. you know, like until we were all locked down, I was like, I'm living through history. Like yeah. this, it, there's this very overused cliche in DC where every comm staffer wants you to think that what their boss just did is history. And I've always been like, this isn't history. This is some like stupid fucking bill, you know, whatever. But like, that was the first time I was like, this is history. Like this yeah. right here. Well, I was hoping, yeah. uh, tragedy aside, that this, I wish the primaries happened during coronavirus so that we, <laughs> right. because like, then we can see the, so, okay, here's a bunch of people facing crisis and it's an opportunity for a leader to step up. Like, I still believe the optimistic view is uh, the game theory of like influencers will always be defeated by actual great leaders. So like, Maybe the great leaders are rare, but I think they're sufficiently out there that they will step up, especially in the moments of crisis. Mm -hmm. And coronavirus is is obviously a crisis where, like, you know, mass manufacture of tests, uh, all all kinds of infrastructure building that you could have done in 2020. There's so many possibilities for just like bold action. It makes and, me sad. Uh, none of that, even just. Forget actually doing the action, advocating for it. Yeah, right. Just saying like this, we need we need to do this. And none of that, like the speeches that Biden made, I, I don't even remember a single speech that Biden made because there's zero bold. I mean, their strategy was to be quiet and let Donald Trump- uh, Polarize the electorate. Po po yeah. Polarize the electorate and hope that results in, in uh, them winning. Uh, because of the high unemployment numbers and all those kinds of things, as opposed to like, let's go big, let's go with a big speech. Let's, know. you know, that, ah, uh, yeah, it's a lost, a lost opportunity in some sense.